Yeah. Right on. Hell yeah. <laughs> We're saying this is going to be our last time talking to you. I know. I'm sad too. I was just uh, talking at the last table and it totally made me, uh, made me sad. <laughs> it's the last time. It's the last time I'm going to do this as a cast for Tina. But you will get together. Oh, yeah. Who would be in the cast? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's without a doubt. Uh, they're my best friends. So, Please course, Instagram that one. <laughs> when we get together, yeah. if you're lucky. <laughs> so we pick up and everybody's helping you out. Is that what this next part of the season is going to be about? Or helping what? me out? Uh, I mean, I feel like I feel like they're always kind of helping me out. Like, yeah. like uh, they're always coming to me for for guidance. And Scott's right. like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but this feels right. Let's go this way. And so you know, they're always kind of behind my back and got my back. Uh, but this season. It does, it does tend to focus more on, on Scott and like revolves around him and um, yeah, yeah, they're definitely helping me out. They're my little badass, my badass pack. I love them. Well, there seems to be a lot of alphas right now in Beacon Hills. I mean, are we having one alpha that's going to be at the end or are we just going to have a spectrum of one? Do we have a lot of alphas right now? Well, I mean, it seems like it with Tyler Hochul and coming back, he was kind of the alpha and then your character Scott and then we've got a Right, right, but then he wasn't an alpha anymore, right? Yeah. Derek's yeah. not an alpha, right? Yeah. Technically not. Technically no. not. He was. How did this power get stripped from him? He gave it up for to save. He Cora. gave it up. Yep. Exactly right. Yeah, so Heckman's not an alpha anymore. I am. Is anybody else? Well, well it seemed like Liam's stepping up to be an alpha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the kid's got potential. Don't get me wrong. There he is, right there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've been kind of teasing Liam stepping up and kind of taking Scott's position. Uh, in, in, in the alpha role and just in the leader of Beacon Hills, um, you know. But I think uh, I think I think he's gonna have to do it his own way. You know, figure out how to be his, an alpha. I, I don't know if true alphas are are handed out that easily. You know? uh, so he's gonna have to work for it, I guess, or kill me. Because if you kill an alpha, you become the alpha. That was the original way before we heard about the true alpha shit. So. <laughs> Well, it does seem like there was kind of a lot, because even Peter Hale was once upon a time an alpha, so I was like, how Peter Hale was once upon a time an alpha. Just, I, I believe it's just more, we all have former alphas. Alpha alumni, if you will. <laughs> yeah. uh, a little alpha reunion. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's really cool having the whole pack that, you know, that once were alphas, because they know how to fight as alphas, they know... They just they 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 know the brain of an alpha, so it's easier to work with somebody who's you know kind of like it's easy to date somebody who's in the same business as you are, you know, because they get it, they get your life. Yeah. It's kind of like that. I just want to date my alpha friend. That's all I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, what can you say about Scott and Malia? Because that kind of took people by surprise. Scott yesterday. Malia. <laughs> yeah. So like season six A, we kind of we kind of did a couple of sneak teases to potentially opening up the relationship to Scott and Malia. Um, and I love it, I love it, I love it. I will always say the best things about Shelly. I think that she is the greatest, most talented person, uh, most loving, caring, affectionate. She's the greatest, and so I was really, really, really happy um, that we got to end the season like that. And uh, it, it, felt, it felt right, you know, in terms of uh, stuff that we haven't really done yet before. Um, Scott had been single for like a full season, which had never happened before, so it was really nice, I think, for Scott to kind of take a step back, um, focus on himself a little bit, realize what he wants, realize who he is. Uh, and at 18, that's still kind of hard, so he's still got some figuring out to do. But, um, but yeah, yeah, he and, he and Malia are really sweet and, uh, you know, really great friends. And I think that's the, 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 how every good relationship forms is by being you know, really good friends at first and then kind of just naturally uh, transcending that. But I'm not saying anything. It could have been, could have been a dream sequence. Oh! oh. Yeah. Don't let you for balls. You know this. Well, does he even have time for a romance, given the fact they're going to be hunted for the next part? Oh, uh, the hey, come on, baby. There's always time for romance. Just a little bit. There's always time for romance. I mean... Those things look weird, don't they? <laughs> they look like buttholes. They look like giants. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got really distracted. But, like, what the hell? It's just the art. I mean, they're also kind of beautiful at the same time. <laughs> I'm not saying a butthole isn't beautiful, but like, uh, all right, we'll come back later. Uh, what did you ask me again? We're talking about the romance and whether it's even time for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, I mean, there's always turmoil in Beacon Hills, and they're always fighting for their lives and trying to 
figure out an, uh, uh, a new method of saving their lives or killing a, a bad guy, or defeating a bad guy, whatever. Um, but they're still kids, you know, and we really try to do a good job at um, making it relatable and, 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 you know, even when you're, like, thrust in, like, danger and destruction and chaos, you know, you can't hide feelings, you can't stop feelings. I mean, if, you know, these feelings are there, you're going to act on them. Um, so we just we just do a good job. I think that's what would really happen if kids were faced with like danger and and there were feelings involved. I don't think they would push the feelings away. So there's always time. What do you think about the way the show wraps up? I mean, do you, did it give you a satisfying ending? Yeah, totally. I really liked it a lot. I uh, I think it gave Scott a really sweet ending. Um, one that I feel like he's needed for a while. You know, Scott's kind of a, a, a not a troubled kid, but like. That kid's always stressed out, you know, and pressured, and I feel bad for him. I feel like he, you know, he needs a break, and he kind of gets that, you get, or you get that sense of it, you know, at the very end, sort of in a way. And it's really, it's a really cool ending. Um, what? Is that, can I answer that? There's yeah. something else I was gonna say. I lost it. Cool. How, how did you feel like working with the character Gerard again? Because you defeated him like way back in season two, and now he's like the big bad again. So. How do you feel like it's coming full circle like that? Total full circle. I think it was a really cool way to wrap it up because, you know, we each season we kind of try to dive into a new folklore and a mythology. And from my point of view, you know, sometimes it can get a little confusing, and, which is always really fun and really cool. But, you know, it, gets, it can get a little confusing. I, I, sometimes I'm watching a show and I'm like, well, what the hell is happening? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we kind of bring it back to, like, the simplest form that it was. And, you know, hunters. Hunters hunting these beasts. And, you know, it doesn't get much more simple than that. You know, it's a war between humans and wolves, and, uh, and it was really cool. Plus, I love Michael. Michael Hook is a great dude, a uh, really talented guy, um, and I learned a lot from him over the years. You know, he 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 is the most committed dude I've ever met. After he would just stay there all fucking night, and all day, never complain, and just always be on. I love him. So yeah, yeah, it was the greatest. I love him that. Scott's grown so much since season one. Like, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> not just like physically, but just like as a both you as an actor and just also as the character. So, what do you feel like Scott's learned the most in the course of the seasons? Um. Like, what can he take away now that he's going to college? Scott take away so much. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've never, I've never thought about that before, really. What can Scott take away? What's the most valuable information that he's learned over the years? How to be a leader? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But, like, there, there's a lot of... I was going to say that, but there, there's a lot of things that come with being a leader, you know? you gotta, you got to learn to let yourself fail. And, and be okay with it. A lot of learning comes from failure. So I think that's one of the things. You know, he's always had the leader mentality. He's always wanted to save people and save his friends and be there. But he didn't really know how, you know. So I think that's what he took away, you know. Learning how to be there and be the hero and the leader. But um, figuring out the balance of, like, leadership and accepting your wrongs. And, and being a human also, you know. Thank you. Thank you.